Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play The Occult Chronicles. In the last episode, we began to explore the second floor of the mansion more thoroughly. We've completed several quests and have pieces in our inventory to turn in several others. Samwise is looking pretty good with a six in swords and a six in cups. He's pretty good when it comes to physicality. And he's following up rather nicely with his wands and pentacles, actually, as well. We grabbed a spell last episode, Death Incantation, because we ended up using one of our Arcana cards to survive a trap that had uh, been sprung on us. But we got another Arcana card right near the end of the episode, which is also giving us plus one pentacles, the devil. That's awesome. The devil's awesome. <laughs> We've gained Whirlwind as well to help us out as another combat feat. A first aid kit to heal us if things go really bad. And otherwise, things are looking pretty good for us. We still need quite a bit of experience points, though. We're at five... Five? Four story tokens in. Almost halfway. Actually, I guess we'll be halfway when we draw one more of them. And we still have quite a bit of experience to earn and spend. So, our character will probably be getting stronger and stronger as we continue onward. Assuming that we don't take any early impairments or wounds in this episode. To that end... Let's pick up where we left off, and attempt it to get the heart out of this wall. The wall weeps blood in pulsing rivulets. You could hear the faint beating sound, but perhaps you were merely imagining it. It mixes with the broken plaster and pools at the base of the wall, draining slowly between the cracks in the floor. You notice a large gash that seems like a laceration. There is something evil and malign pulsing within the wall. Some eldritch sorcery has left its taint here as well. You should proceed with caution. We failed, I think, two attempts at this last episode. <laughs> right at the very end. And uh, I strategically decided to cut the recording after that. Because if I get something really bad here, it give, gives me the excuse to alt F4 and no one would ever be the wiser. But I'm going to try to do this without doing that. Alright, so we get an Eight of Pentacles. So we're going to play the Queen. I think in this episode as well, I'll talk about what's going through my head as I'm playing cards. So we get the Eight of Pentacles here. And so, we could play the page on it to earn ourselves three points, or the queen to earn five. Now, I don't like the idea of losing this encounter, so instinctively I want to play the queen. The only reason to hold on to the queen, as opposed to the page of pentacles here, is because I would also think that the knight of pentacles is up here. But the odds of that is pretty low, so I'm thinking that the queen would be the better one to use here. So we will do that. We have a two of cups. We have to play a cups card, so we'll play the ten on the two. And that lets us win the challenge after playing two cards. Very nice. Now we'll attempt to get more points. The king of pentacles showed up. Okay, we'll play our five on the king so we don't lose the page. It doesn't matter if I play the ten or the nine, since the eight of swords can only be taken by... It. Sorry. If, it, if we see other sword cards up here that are numbers the 10 or 9 would take them as well so we'll play the 10 play the 9 and we got to play our page all right that worked out really well for us we got to take most of the cards that were up there you got your hand deeper and deeper into the wall until you're well past your elbow you try and feel for the rhythmic vibration of the heart and move your hand towards it suddenly you feel something hard and crystal like you utter the words of release and then grab it and wrench it free the Black Heart. So this is going to give us a Cups penalty as long as we're holding on to it. It also weighs one weight for Cups. So it's reducing our Cups to five instead of six and taking up a spot in our inventory for it. Now, is there any reason to come back up on this side? There is. The Rashaka there. Okay, so let's go downstairs. And we will turn this into the bass relief right now. To get it out of our inventory. The bass relief face seems to almost be smiling at you and it makes you feel uneasy. 
The smile belies the agony that it must be in. The mumbling's meaning now seems crystal clear. Its heart has been ripped from it and hidden somewhere in the house. The sorcery binding it cannot be broken until its heart is returned to it. It wants you to seek out the wall that weeps blood and reach inside to find and free its heart. It's taught us the ritual to do so. Oh, we have a fantastic chance to betray it. You know what? We're going to betray it. So the main reason for this is the heart could give us a way to scry cards if it decides to choose that as a reward. And the quest completion for this is, I think, something that might help our persuasion a tiny bit. But I, I want the heart, so let's keep it. You feel the Elder Sorcery coursing through the heart like it, it really is pumping energy somewhere. You have an odd idea that you may be able to break the bond it has with the Basilee face and claim it as your own. It would undoubtedly be an artifact of great power. The severing of the link might even destroy the manifestation outright. Right, we're going to try to keep it. We have an okay hand. Three face cards? Two face cards. And of course we get a bunch of aces. I mean going to play the page here on the ace even though the eight might be the better choice because i want to win this challenge and then gain more cards. actually the eight would let us win the challenge just by placing it but i have a bad feeling we're going to see a high another face cups card up here and i was wrong should have played that should have played that eight on the ace well, we won. Six points over. That's probably four card draw. Well done, Tim. You grip the heart in your hand and hold it up in front of the bastardly face. It realizes your intent, but it's too late. You speak the oath of conversion that you recall from your knowledge of eldritch lore. Again, we might, I think we were working as a bodyguard or something for that. Oh, well, maybe actually we read a few of the books that we had uh, when we had raided the Black Sorcerer's Lodge. This is allowing us to, to do this. The face screams in agony, and you hear it swear revenge as the energy is drained from it, and the stone face grows cold and empty. So it still weighs one weight. Whenever you might take an impairment card, after it has been revealed during the results phase, there is a 50% chance that it will be discarded instead. That's just okay, if I'm being honest. An edge upgrade. Our very first edge upgrade. Well, this episode. All right, so I tended to take martial arts expert. Let's grab martial arts expert. This will play nicely with my weapons and allow me to bump cards up from a, from a number card up to a knight if I roll high enough. So let's take this up one rank. Okay, and the heart. So, an impairment is a card that sits in your wands, I think, or pentacles inventory, and it applies a negative effect to you. Impairments and wounds are some of the most nastiest things that can happen to you aside from you dying instantly. And I'd almost rather just die instantly than get a wound or impairment card. It just prolongs your inevitable death. Uh, a impairment card might be like uh, minus two wands. Whenever you draw, whenever you suffer sanity damage, you suffer one more. Or minus one pentacles. Uh, spells have a greater chance of failing, or something of that that sort. They're absolutely nightmarish, and I try to go out of my way to never get them. You most of the time will get an impairment card for failing psychic challenges when the psychic challenge is very difficult to defeat. Things in the basement, for example, if you try to beat them with psychics and you fail, there's a good chance you'll get an impairment card. So having this is useful. Because it gives us a chance to not take one of those. But I'm probably going to be using my physicality in the basement more than uh, my psychic powers. We will see when we get there. Alright, so with that turned in, I'm going to step on these insects. And we will attempt to step across them. We won with that two. We were able to take the ace. None of the other cards were useful to us. And I'm going to walk in here and give this place a look. There's nothing even in here. Okay. Okay. 
So I don't care. So we slept over the insects. If you win that challenge, it counts as an evade. So that's good enough for me. We don't need to do to move anymore. So I, and by that, I mean, I'm sorry. We don't need to draw any more cards. There's no reason to prolong that battle any longer. We don't really gain anything for winning it. So we'll just move on. Um, okay. So I'm going to go back on this side of the house now. And defeat the piano to free the spirit in it. Our first protector. You stumble upon a small twisted hunchback dwarf. He seems to be as surprised to see you as you are to see him. He must be a servant of some sort. Without hesitation, he starts yelling, Alarm! Alarm! There seems to be nobody around to respond to his cries for help. Uh, I've never watched the original Dracula or Nosferatu movies, but I'm pretty sure this is a nod towards them, since the Elder is our mission that we're doing this time. So I think, by the way, that the only encounter you get to do normally is to attack the Hunchback or flee. I think I added these as options, but I can't remember. I'm pretty sure I did, though. And I think, though, our best chance to defeat it is to attack it physically. You decide to silence this creature as quickly as possible. And all we have in our hand is number cards, so that's not looking very promising for us. Oh, but maybe we won't have to worry about it. We can take the ace with our three. We can take that two with our four, and we won the challenge. Wow! We had a bunch of just number cards, and most of them were just low. But there were even lower cards on the trick-taking board. We didn't even need to use my melee weapons. They wouldn't have helped us in any way. The twisted creature lets out a pathetic moan as it crumples to the floor. With its last breath, it Matt gasps, The master will not be pleased. I think you can get bullets from killing from killing these creatures, yep. But we failed to get a gun, so that doesn't really help us. The vampire coven has been driven out of hiding several times, and each time lashed out like a wounded beast. Why did they send just one agent to reconnoitre this location? Sorry, re I can't pronounce that word. All horror challenges have a 15% minus the value of your luck. That an impairment result card will be generated when the challenge is failed while this story icon is active. These are some nightmarish story icons. Well, now I'm really glad we have that heart with us. That's a 50% chance if we draw one of them, then we won't have to worry about it. And we have, I think, three luck. So it's a 12% chance for us that if we fail a horror, one of those, one of those nothing of interest will be an impairment instead. All right, so let's free the pianist. So this must be what's holding up the pianist. He is caught in a spirit trap that was elaborately constructed in the physical form of this piano. You've heard of such things. The piano is old, but fully functional. The more you examine it, the more you realize that the piano is integral to the trap itself, which must have required a true master of spirit manipulation to fabricate. You notice that the keys have odd symbols etched faintly onto them. You recognize them as belonging to the lost scriptures of Nag Hammadi. That makes sense. If you can remember the correct release invocation and press the correct keys, then you should be able to disable the trap and free the ghost pianist. We have a good card draw for this, too. Uh, I'll play the eight and hope we can use the queen on something different. It's not easy, but you decipher the keys and free the pianist. He is most grateful and vows to accompany you until you return to the ball. He says that you will never even know he's there. Three more experience points, huh? Let's begin towards a Bone of Wands. This way, we'll be able to use Psychic Talents. Since if you take a Psychic Talent and don't have a Bone of Wands, you can't actually use any Psychic Talents in combat. So it's pointless for us to take a Psychic Talent or even an Edge for one. I mean, this wouldn't benefit from us. We wouldn't benefit from an Edge for a Psychic Talent if we don't have a Psychic talent, talent anyway. But until we get a Bone of Wands, we can't use any Psychic Talents. So we should grab one of those next. 
Now, this is going to be really flippin' dangerous, but I'm here, and I don't want to wander back. So we're going to see what both of these are. They'll both require us to pass a horror check, but I can't just wait around and not do encounters, unless I want to wait till another story token is drawn. And that's, once I hit the fourth story token, it's time to go into the basement, as we're running out of time. You immediately notice the enormous 12-foot stuffed crocodile displayed prominently in the room, which is adorned with many other eccentric collector's pieces. A sudden chill shoots down your spine as the tail of this crocodile begins to sweep back and forth. The eyelids flick open, and you know something is terribly wrong. You can't be sure whether this thing is alive, undead, or animated by some dark sorcery, but it certainly looks hungry. Alright, horror challenge. Let's see if we can actually do this successfully. I'm going to play the king, because that will let us win. And I'm worried we wouldn't get to play the King of Wands on any other card. And I would have been right. We would have lost this. Usually things far worse than this. The crocodile turns to face you. And you can clearly see that st the stitches that indicate that this creature was stuffed and then reanimated, probably as a garden unit for this place. Its gaze is locked on you, and it slowly starts to advance towards your location. Okay, we have a good chance to beat it up, so beating up is what we're going to do. It's animated by sorcery, but it has a physical body. You've been able to deal with such threats in the past by destroying the physical body, and this time should be no different. Uh, I'll play the four to start, and hope we can play the king. On a face pentacle card, and there was one. We can take the ace with our two. Let's use our axe on our five. And then we'll play it. And then I will use my machete on the ten. To change it into a knight. So that shows that with these two melee weapons of ours, we are able to actually, and, and with that one edge that lets us increase the value of these cards, we can win quite a few points and possibly take turn a loss into a victory. It also means that I will be very tempted to do combats like this rather than use my psychic uh, abilities. You have won the battle. You knocked a stuffing out of it until it can't continue any further. We got 23 points total, and we needed just five. That was an amazing fight for us. We also got four experience. That's enough for a bone, so we'll grab a bone of wands. There we go. That's now all those bones, and I think we will aim towards taking a psychic talent next. Now this is the stuff, this is the head mounted wall. It just occurs to me that I did this incorrectly. I should not have come in here. We still need to find the polar bear and it's not gonna be in this room. So we're going back upstairs. It might be over here. I don't wanna search over there. Let's see what's in this room. Another class one haunting. All right. Ooh, this has gotten a lot tougher for us since the last time we did these. Look at those difficulty modifiers now. Sorry, the difficulty challenge. A 13 or a 14. Well, we'll take the 14 because we have Getter. Let's just use our weapons. All right, well, that has won us this battle. And then some. We may as well, by the way, use the machete to try to earn a few more points. And we didn't. You got her good. No one's going to believe how you did it. And you're not sure you are either. Seven courage. Very nice. Your attention is drawn to an old suit of armor standing guard in the gloom. 
As you strain to make out its features, you realize something is terribly wrong. A sudden chill shoots down your spine, and a sense of dread engulfs you. There is dark sorcery involved in this, and it nibbles at your sanity. Your eyes wide in disbelief as the cursed armor turns to meet your gaze. You must fight to keep your sanity. This is a horror check. We need to play the knight, because I need to win this challenge. And it's a good thing I did. Actually, we could have taken that three with a seven, and then the nine we could have taken with the knight. But I wasn't sure that we would get another wands card, so that worked out for us. You see things far worse than this. The altered suit of armor is animated by some evil sorceress artifice. Such a curse would require great power and forbidden knowledge. Its gaze is locked on you, and you sense an intelligence of some sort. You sense a keen intelligence before you. An aura of sadness permeates its very being. You also sense desire. Perhaps you can figure out what, if anything, this cursed suit of armor wants. Well, probably not with this card draw. You attempt to make contact with the haunted armor, but your efforts fail. Try that again. A little better, but I'm not having a good feeling about this. Minus three sanity. Because we have over 30 sanity and 30 life, and because of, we're now at five story tokens, and because of all our stats and what have you, the game is now beginning to dra uh, draw greater amounts of sanity from us upon a loss. The good news is that we did lose one sanity. The game might, and did not do so, might have made this easier. I mean, it's definitely not making it easier with the cards it's, it's giving to us. Wow, but we, no, nope, we still didn't win. Look at that. Because we drew, we have, a, we have an ace and a two in our hand. Uh, not a good hand. We'll need a we'll need a we'll need another card of victory of some sort up there. Okay, and it finally gave us the win. The intelligence speaks to you. The sadness and anguish are nearly overwhelming, but you understand that it wants you to break its curse. Five hundred years ago, a subotic witch stripped the knight's soul from his body, sealed it into the armor, and bound the key within a small glass bead. The bead was taken by a common thief who perished in this house thirty years ago. The haunted armor cannot use the key itself. But perhaps you can. And we know where that guy is. He's back downstairs. You see a spent candle placed next to seven chalk circles. You have the impression that somebody has been playing a game here. You notice the cards sitting in three of the circles. A sudden chill shoots down your spine as you recognize one of the cards. Death. Horror check. Something supernatural is going on here, and you can feel it in your bones. A ritual was in the process of being performed and was suddenly interrupted. You can sense the spirit energy swirling about this place. That's a phenomenal hand. This is probably one of the best hands I've ever gotten because we have all four kings in our hand for, for every single suit. Yeah, we're not afraid of a board game. You shrug off the effects of the supernatural energy that has been drawn to this location via the ritual that the deck has begun to invoke. Alongside death sit despair and darkness. The unseeing eye seems to preside over all three. This is a very unusual deck. You can't place it exactly from memory. You think it might have originated in the Balkans, but you are not so sure. You still need to set up carefully and decide what to do next. So, we can play the game without the key. It's not a good chance for us to succeed, and it can end up with some very bad results. Or we can figure out what was going on here. If we succeed at this, then we will get a quest to find that painting with the red hand in it, which is all the way over on the other side of the mansion. That said, we will still try to decipher it, because I'd rather have the quest than to uh, eliminate it as a possibility for us. Yes, you recognize the deck in the setup. It's clearly the work of the Red Hand. You thought that the cult had been destroyed utterly. Why would a Red Hand divination deck be set up here? There must be a spirit key nearby. You should try to find it. In 
If you find the key, you can play the deck without the worry that you might precipitate some catastrophic event. You suspect that it is nearby. A key for a deck created for the Red Hand will most likely bear the mark of the Red Hand somewhere conspicuous. You will know it when you see it. I think we go back downstairs. And we just, we might as well interact with the thief right now. There's no other reason to come back into this corner of the mansion. This must be the body of which the haunted armor spoke. You see the king's satchel of the thief's tools and loot gripped in the skeletal hand. Oh, that's an okay hand. If we, if we get pentacles, we'll be in good shape. You rummage through the corpse's pockets and possessions and find nothing. Staring down at what is left of the desiccated remains, a thought suddenly occurs to you. You cut open the corpse's stomach and search around. There it is. You pick it up. It glows eerily in the darkness. I think Vic should have made it so that more of these quests gave you items that were cursed. Or these items maybe wouldn't be cursed. They'd just take up inventory space and give you some other benefit. And then you'd have a choice of whether or not to turn it in for experience. And for other, maybe more powerful items. But it would be a chance to, to do so. More malevolent shadows. We will shadow box them. You throw a few jabs and notice they actively avoid the shadow of your punches. For a second they hesitate. That's when you realize you can take them. It's going to be a bit of touch and go though. Metaphorically speaking. Uh, we have a single face card, and of course two aces, but that face card is a king, and we're in physical combat, so we can use a bunch of our other weapons here. Alright, that kind of worked out. Uh, I'm going to try... get a few more points and it might work no it didn't work okay well well we win not many people are afraid of their own shadows let alone others looks like these nightmares should have been though Have you found the bead? The haunted armor gazes expectantly at you, and you feel the anticipation in its voice. You decide to tell the armor that you have found the bead that the Sabotic Witch used to imprison his soul. You say that you will help free it. The haunted armor shudders in anticipation. Salvation is at hand, it tells you. It directs you to place the bead in front of it and crush it with your foot. A cloud of sickening green vapor erupts followed by a soul-piercing howl. It was a trick. The witch lied. The armor now wants to follow you until it can exact its revenge. You know, this would be neat if... The, it's not, to my knowledge, but if this quest was linked to Fall from Grace, the suit of armor, if it's an animated suit of armor, would be Valor, right? From Planescape Torment. It'd be neat if you encounter Fall from Grace, if the suit of armor gives you an option to kill her there. So the suit of armor gives itself as a reward for completing this quest. It gives us plus one swords, and if we fail a combat challenge, it blocks health, similar to that one a health loss. Sorry, similar to that one arcana card blocking sanity. And we gain two more experience points. Psychic talent time. I would like something that we can use to help us win horror challenges. So, some of the options you get for talents or edges will decrease the sanity loss that you possess as a result of failing a challenge. This is, in my opinion, almost always useless. You never want to take one of those feats or talents unless you absolutely have to. It's the only thing that you can pick. Because you're much better suited never ever losing combat. And to that end, 
you might not get any sanity loss cards. You may get an impairment or an instant insanity. And instead of having to reduce the amount of sanity loss you take, it would have been far better for you to have won that challenge. So I'll never take something like Heal Mind. Mind Shield is interesting. Man, so I'm not too familiar with these. I think we'll take... I, I love scrying in this game. Uh, Twist Fate is interesting. Uh, it lets you add plus one to all other bone rolls that you make. So it can be used to help you do other things, like cast, I think, magic spells or use your uh, combat cards. But I generally don't like the idea of using this just to use another card. Select a non-face card in hand with value Y. Roll one bone and add X points to your trick-taking score where X is the number of wands rolled. If X is greater than or equal to Y. Discard that card and draw a new one. Roll one bone and add X points to your trick-taking score where X is the number of wands rolled. Then add a trick to the field. Oh, this just gives you flat-out points. Vaporize mind. Third eye. Roll one bone and scry X random not revealed trick cards. Allow suits and values to be seen without revealing them, where X number of wands rolled. I really do like things like Third Eye. What doesn't help me here is something I complained about before. I don't know when these can be used. Some of these may only be able to use in combat, some in psychic tests, some in horror checks. I'm not sure. Let's take the Third Eye. Roll one bone and scry X random not revealed trick cards. Where X is number of wands rolled. And then... Ooh, we can grab a Talisman Edge. I'm going to go for that next. And we're going to save... Actually, we're not going to save the game yet. What's my... So that talent went into my wands inventory. Horror checks, combat, psychic, and sorcery it can be used in. Interesting. Okay, let's save the game. Weird to always say that when I'm playing Reaper mode, right? Okay. So we're going to check this bathroom after we kill this class 1 haunting. Oh my goodness, it's getting tougher to win these fights. Get her. That's it. That's the whole plan. Get her. Oh. Okay, two knights. It's not the worst hand we've ever had. Uh... Do I want to use Whirlwind here? How many, how much courage do I have? Let's use, oh... Uh... Let's flip a card or two over first. Okay, and we won, so I didn't have to use any of my weapons. So I'm going to use my axe on our 10 to bump it up to a knight and take that page. I can't do anything about you. Uh, we might be able to change the five into a page if we roll very high with... Oh, but we could make our six a page with a better, a slightly better chance. We still didn't do it. Okay. Uh, if this was a page, this would earn us plus one more point. So and there's no reason not to use my, my right hook and my left uppercut here in an attempt to... Uh, to do it. Uh, to get us an extra point. Two more experience points. Work towards that talisman edge. This is probably the plumber. You are suddenly confronted with the appearance of a ghost that seems to phase in from out of thin air. It stares at you and then turns away to kneel down and mimic the act of working on something around the sink. Suddenly, ghostly red tentacles leap out at the plumbing, and the ghost works violently. 
I can't pronounce this word. Works frantically to keep them at bay. Valiantly? I think that's how you say it. Despite all your training, the manifestation sends tendrils of fear deep into your mind. You must steal your resolve and steady your nerves. Uh-oh. Well, we have an absolutely awful hand to resist this horror check. And nothing up there will benefit... We lost. Okay. So, do we want to use a fate card? I think we will. We'll play the hero front to win the horror challenge. You've kept your sanity. You take a deep breath. Just another day in the odd. You are watching the ghost of some long-dead handyman go about fixing an imaginary leak on a sink. The ghost begins to whistle a haunting melody and goes about its business paying you no heed. The red ghost tentacles continue to slip out of the plumbing and the ghost plumber startledly works to fix the leak. You sense that the ghost isn't focused on this location. It probably travels all over the estate making supernatural repairs. You decide to enter a trance and use your skills as a medium to find out what this ghost is up to. Perhaps it knows something about the house that can help you. Well, we're going to need a sword card to make that succeed. And we, we got lucky. You establish contact and psychically clear your throat. The ghost looks up at you with a troubled look on its face. It wants your help. I won't be able to fix this without me wrench. Can you go and fetch it for me? I left it around here somewhere. I had a bad leak and needed to seal it. These damn things are everywhere. The ghost goes back to his work. It looks like a wrench might indeed help him out. You wonder just what type of wrench he needs. You know what that wrench is. But it's going to be a really difficult uh, test, that. There might be an encounter here, but I really don't want to fight that poltergeist. Okay, so we are crawling back to Benway. And now that I've used another Arcana card, I'm going to try to not explore any more new locations until after this goes away. I mean, it's only a 12% chance we get an impairment card, but that would practically ruin our attempt at this run. So I would like to not get one. You hand the sample over to Benway and tell them that the creature has been destroyed. Excellent. I'll be able to use this sample to cure countless diseases. I wouldn't have been able to do it without your help. Of course, I could make a nice biological weapon as well. Choices, choices. At any rate, here is your reward. Look over in the box over there. You might find something that you like. You might not either. Oof. Only one experience point. That was terrible. Dr. Laszlo Bedway has again returned to his work, seemingly having forgotten your presence. He remains hunched over his workbench, maniacally pursuing whatever weird experiment he has thought of now. You wonder if this is some strange ritual that he has somehow draws pleasure from. You suspect he very much wants to talk with you, so you go ahead with the grand charade, charade and clear your throat again to get his attention. Yes, this will let us win. Yes, very well. How do you feel about robots, mechanical men, that sort of thing? It seems that my mechanical assistant, Tor, has wandered off. I sent him to find my boffin juice, and he never came back. You'll need to find him and then replace his battery pack, no doubt. Here's a fully charged unit. Now off you go. All right. Let's, uh... Let's save the game first... Before I choose a Talisman Edge. I used to be a big fan of taking the Talisman Edges that reduce the release rate of my Talismans. So I could always guarantee that I could pick them whenever they show up. But recently, within the past like three years, I have given up on that. Ah. But this is kind of what I was worried about. So, the Talisman Edges in the, in the base game. So... You might remember that a long time ago, I had modded the Talisman Edges, and every single option for every Talisman Edge that you could have elected to pick showed up here as an option. 
That is no longer the case. The In the normal game, if you buy this from Cryptic Comet, the Talisman Edges that you are allowed to pick are very limited in what you gain and might not benefit you in any way whatsoever. In our case, a Cups of Water would give us plus one Cups because of this Talisman here. However, I really want a Fire Talisman. And I don't want... I don't even know what this means. The benefits of any talismans that you possess are doubled? What does that mean? I don't know what that even means. <laughs> uh, in any case, uh, what I'm thinking is that... Uh, so, attuned makes it so that there's a chance... The chance that these go away is increased. So, 2% uh, chance is subtracted where, uh, per level of the edge. Harmony increases the chance that it will be triggered and show up. Um, Fire Fidelity gives you a slight chance that if you were to lose a Talisman Edge, that you would get to keep it instead of losing it. I don't know, I have no clue what ap Fire application, uh, application does. And Cups of Water is not what I wanted. I want to see a Fire Tal- a Fire Improvement here, not a Water one. So what I'm going to do right now, everyone, is I'm going to cut the recording. I'm going to kill the game off so it doesn't save itself. I'm going to reload, and I'm going to see if I choose this again, if I get a different set of abilities. And if I don't, if this is the same thing, then I guess we will take probably Fire Attuned. So give me a few seconds, I'll be right back. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I went back to the main menu, and the moment I did that... The game saved, so it's not possible for me to try to get out of this. And I backed up my save file to make sure I could do a revert some time ago. So, like, I think it was three recordings ago. So, we're going to stick with what I chose instead. And I chose Wand Amplification by accident when I chose that upgrade. So, the benefits of any Fire Talismans that I possess are doubled. I have no clue what that means at all. <laughs> like, not even a little bit. It doesn't appear to have affected this in any way. So, we've wasted our uh, Talisman Edge. Alright, well, let's move on. Malevolent Shadows. So, let's... Let's Shadow Box them, because we can use our melee abilities. Can I change the page into a knight? I don't think that's what the edge lets me do. No, I can't change the page. I don't... I can't, yep, I can't change the page. I had to play the page anyway, so. Um, let's play this page to let us win this fight. Yeah, this is one of the, this is one of the reasons I hate Reaper mode. I, I hate Reaper mode for this reason, because I can't undo a pick that I make. Okay. Well, since, since we're throwing all in at the moment with trying uh, encounters, I think we will attempt to dispel the crystal ball here. Sorcery always powers a crystal ball to give it the ability to act as a medium. This is obviously a special case where the ball has been created to imprison the medium, but you feel confident you can break the sorcerer's seals that have been created here. Let's give it a try. And I'm going to use the third eye. You only got to reveal one card, and it was not one that helped us out at all. And we lost. Badly. You thought you knew the chant for dispelling this thing, but you can't get the incant intonation correct. The spirits of the room are disturbed, and their psychic energy lashes out at you. Okay, well, we didn't take an impairment or anything horrible. Let's try that again, and we get absolute garbage cards again. Oh, 
Oof, wow. Uh, okay. Let's join the seance then instead. Maybe we'll have a easier time being a part of their cool of their cool gang. And we did. This was a tougher challenge to make, but we actually were successful at it. The face of the smoke introduces herself as Madame Leota, and you find no difficulty in establishing a, re a report with her. She reveals to you some very important information, does she? She does. The experience is very nice. We would have been able, I think, to gain a crystal ball. There's a chance to gain it from that encounter, but we already had the crystal ball, so. Um, I'm going to increase our cups next. And we have what we need for the figure in the mirror. So let's turn back in. Uh, let's give her back her child. You release the child of energy back to its mother. You step towards the mirror and the child of energy seems to flow out from your body and through the portal. You feel the pure joy of the reunion. As promised, you are rewarded. Plane touched. A 5% chance that a nothing of interest card will be turned into a gain cha charges card during sorcery challenges. And two more experience points as well. So let's grab a physical test edge next. So we don't want to do this because we have to pass a horror check here. And it's going to be really nasty, that horror check. So there's nothing, I don't want to go in the attic because of horror checks at this moment. So we're not going to do that either. Let's just go back downstairs and see if we can turn in any other quests. Here's the red tapestry for the hand. Let's go ahead and interact with this and decipher it. This is obviously the key for the red hand card game ritual that you found earlier. You decide to examine the tapestry more closely to decipher the key. This might be risky. You almost didn't see it at first, but the key is built into the movement of the two armies of knights as they prance around the battlefield. You quickly note down the corresponding cards and their locations. Now, any sanity you gain over 40 is completely lost. You don't get to keep it. So we're not going to gain any more sanity at the moment with our max. Uh, we can pick up one more experience point. We'll take that towards a physical test. We have the pianist following us. We could turn this quest in. So why don't we do that to start? You decide to tell the ghost that you have found the ghost pianist and the ball can resume. The ghostly pianist makes his entrance on your queue, and the band strikes up a grand waltz. The ghost's attention is now focused on you. You think you know what they want, and you wish you had taken more lessons. Temperance. All successful challenges that do not normally have a chance to generate a skill token card, that's these, by the way, have a small chance to do so, and any challenge that normally would has its chance increased by 50% while this card is in your inventory. That was really nice. The ghosts seem to be murmuring among themselves. It's obvious they want you to have the honor of the first dance. Your first partner steps up and the introduction is made. Before you know it, you are waltzing around the floor. Well, we don't have a good chance at this since we don't have any face cards in our hand. You start off fine, but then you realize that you are a little rusty. The dance awkwardly comes to a halt, and you feel psychically drained. The good news about these these encounters, there's three of them here. Right here at this, this is similar to the gong that we had just done. Is that to my recollection, there's no horrific penalty for failing any of these dances. You just get the chance again. You might lose some sanity, but we have that one card in inventory that helps reduce sanity loss, so I don't think we're in any danger by failing these over and over. And unlike the gong encounters, you must pass all three of these in succession 
or you start all over from the very first one. So I guess we'll just keep trying this until we win. The King of Cups, Queen of Cups has shown up, but we have the King in our inventory, so that was a that was a nice uh, a nice victory there. You dance around the ballroom in glorious circles. Your partner seems to be having the time of its life. The ghosts seem quite pleased with your dancing ability. The play applause tells you that they want you to continue. Their second partner steps up and an introduction is made. Before you know it, you are waltzing around the floor. I don't have a good feeling about this one. You still need some work, it seems. You didn't know that it was possible to step on a ghost's foot. The dance awkwardly comes to a halt, and you feel cyclically drained. Now we have to do the first one again. To my knowledge, by the way, time does not elapse while you are in encounters. So we could we could stay here for some time. Now, because we stay here for some time and fail this over and over again. So I mentioned that we don't take... So remember that even though I'm only expecting to take a little bit of sanity loss here, we do have 40 sanity. So the game's going to make us lose a bit more at this point. We won't lose one or two. We'll lose anywhere from like four or two. Also, we have psychic pushback currently in effect because we have used our psychic challenge a little while ago so until that fades off of us i think that increases the damage we take whenever we take uh psychic damage the good news about okay well the good news is that the lower sanity we 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 have the easier these challenges might become for us we're apparently not a dancer which is a bit odd considering that we are a boxer you'd think that we would know our footwork by now I'll play the queen. The ghosts seem quite pleased with your dancing ability. The play applause tells you that they want you to continue. Okay, so let's... Ah, uh, decent. Two kings. We will need another... Will, will need the other king be played to win this challenge, or... Another cups or swords card that we can take. There we go. Okay, with our eight, uh, we can have our three. You glide and swirl around and around. You and your partner practically have an out-of-body experience. There is a chance you can gain things from this, like experience points. Um, but we're just getting unlucky. The ghosts are quite enthralled with your dancing. The enthusiastic applause tells you that they want you to have one final dance. Your final partner steps up and the, introductions, and the introduction is made. Before you know it, you are waltzing around the floor. Hopefully we get a pentacles card, and we do. We could take it with the five and hope for another pentacles up there, but... Maybe we'll do that. Let's do that. Okay, that was a smart thing to do. You waltz around the floor as if traveling in another dimension. You know this is an experience that you will never forget. The dance finishes, and you find yourself alone in the ballroom. Dances with Ghost. Anytime you would be reduced to zero sanity, there's a 20% chance that you will be reduced to only one sanity instead. And two more experience points. So, physical test challenge. Let's see. I'm just going to read these to myself, everyone, as opposed to reading them out loud, because you guys will just get confused <laughs> by those. Uh, let's see. Oh, I do like Steam, things like Steamroller. But I also like Technique Perfectionist, so we'll grab this. At the beginning of any physical test challenge, X random tricks placed on the board are in a scryed state, where X is the level of the edge. So we'll grab that to start. And then we get another... Two points to place somewhere. Um, let's grab a Psychic Talent Edge next. 
And what can that be leveled up to? Four times can Technique Perfectionist be leveled up. We have a little bit of time left. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have plenty of time left. All right. Let's go ahead and get the Rishaka's papers. You think these might be the stash of papers that the Rishaka sent you after. You should be careful in case these, the ward can harm you. Well, we have absolutely won this. You sensed the ward, and since it's not directly attuned to you, you're able to defeat it temporarily. You quickly gather up the manuscript pages and put them back in your pockets. Three experience. Very nice. Thank you, Temperance. I'm pretty sure you helped me with that. Temperance is a great talent, uh, is a great arcana card for us to have, because we have been struggling to get experience early on, so Temperance will make up for it very quickly. Let's see. Whenever you use a psychic talent during a challenge, and points are added to your trick-taking score. Add X additional... Well, our, our one talent doesn't give us any points. You gain X additional uses of any psychic ta challenge. I like that. Whenever you roll a wand's bone, determine whether psychic talents failed. Add X to your wand's attribute for the purpose of... Oh, that's not going to be a problem. We have... Well, it could be. I'm sorry. We only have five wands. So if we roll a six... We would fail our psychic challenge. It wouldn't actually work. Maybe we should take this. Because I don't think we have a way to guarantee another point in wands. Right? We didn't get that as a talisman option, which I was hoping for. Oh... That's tempting, though. Whenever you're successful in a challenge of any type, you have a 2% times X chance of having a major Arcana card appear as one of the result cards. That would be, I think, I'm calling our Arcana cards major Arcana. I think those are the special, unique cards that we're getting to win. Those are things like the Devil. My goodness, why am I having such a hard time explaining that? Ooh, this is tricky. I like a great many of these. I think we need to take apportation, though, at the moment, because we don't have a way to increase our wands another point up to six. Yeah, we'll take apportation. So, whenever we roll a wands bone, we get to add X to the attribute for the purposes of determining if it succeeds or not. So that effectively gives us a six in wands, making sure that our psychic talents cannot fail to be used. Right? We don't have anything that incre is increasing our wands attribute otherwise. No item is giving us a wands increase. Now I do think that the, the brain canister gives us a wand, plus one wands, but we haven't found that... Uh, that portal anywhere, so I'm going to go with this is still a smart move to do at this moment. Okay, and let's move on. So, I still want to avoid horror challenges at the moment. Oh, there's so many encounters here that we haven't completed. <coughs> they must be in the attic. Okay, let's go and turn in this quest and gain the cat as an ally. I think that will increase our pentacle score. He's all the way over there, though, Tim. These must be in the attic, most of these. Let's not go over here yet. Let's not go over there yet. Go... Where the frick is the butler? <laughs> He's usually on the first floor somewhere. I'm surprised we haven't... Oh! 
We haven't fully explored the first floor. So let's beat up some ghouls. To start. Go ahead and increase this number. Very nice to help us win. I'm really glad we took that one edge. That is such a nice edge for our character. Having gotten lucky enough to gain two melee weapons. Yep, the ghouls are no match for us. Look at all that courage. When we fight ghouls in the future, we should use Whirlwind at the very least. That is amazing. All right, so I'm going to explore the rest of the first floor. I forgot that we haven't explored fully this area yet. There's two doors here. A deadly pendulum blade trap. You hear a mechanism click and see motion at the corner of your eye. A large pendulum swings down onto your location at a tremendous rate of speed. It looks like it could cut you in half. Instinctively duck and roll out of the way from the falling blade. Let's use the... Uh, let's... Mm, oh, I do have a King of Pentacles. Okay, I'm going to play the Eight of Swords here. And maybe we have a better target for our Knight of Swords. Pentacles card. I will play the Six of Pentacles here as well. Not the King. There's still six cards... Seven cards, sorry, left over. So a chance of a Pentacles or a low-level Swords card is pretty decent so far. And there's a Knight of Pentacles, so now we'll play the King. And now we've won the challenge. I don't I don't feel anywhere near as threatened, obviously. Alright, well done. You tuck into a roll and come up four feet away unscathed. Come on, Aura of Fortune. Yes! <laughs> Our luck has improved to four. And now we only have an 11% chance to get a impairment card with a story token active. Okay, we also gained more experience. Seven experience! Holy crap! All right. Um, let's grab another psychic talent. We could also grab another feat. That would help us keep more courage. Let's grab a another heroic feat. So let's see. If you have two more... Uh, so... Oh, did I grab an edge? Oh, I grabbed an edge by accident. I thought this was a feat, but we're grabbing a a edge instead. Okay. So our current edge increases all our face cards numbers. And the other one decreases the number card and draws an extra card for us. I mostly am interested in improving our heroic leap because traps are much more worrisome to me at this moment than combat will be. So Braveheart is one I usually like because it decreases the cost of courage by the level of this edge, which I think can only be one, <laughs> by the way. So I don't think it, uh, we can't level it, but uh, it's still, that's still nice. A sounding energy could be useful. We could use our, oh, but that's combat heroic feats. Uh, let's see, do we have, uh, 
uh, two steps ahead. Whenever a defensive heroic feat is performed, it requires a card to be selected as a target. Target up to X additional cards. I think with heroic uh, leap, this would let us target two cards, for example. Using our Heroic Leap and then gaining free points would also be really helpful. I'm tempted to take Finesse Escape. X is a random number. It's probably just one point. After a, the use of a defensive heroic feat, a random counter action marker is removed from an unrevealed trick card on the board. I don't even know what that means. Can we get something that scries cards? I don't think we can. No. Okay, this is not the case. Alright, so we can't scry any cards with any of these. So... I... Darn it. I don't really want to have... I didn't really want to, do to have done this. <laughs> I didn't really want an edge. I, thought I wanted a feat. Um... I think we grab Finesse Escape, then. Two Steps Ahead is also nice. I like Two Steps Ahead and Finesse Escape. Um, let's grab this. After the use of... I, I think Heroic Leap is a defensive feat. After the use... I think defensive feat, Heroic Feats are things that, are your, that you use for traps. Uh, and it's not... These aren't Intellect Feats, either. Right? Those are, I think, in your wands inventory. Yeah, let's, let's take this. After use of a defensive heroic feat, X points are added to your trick-taking score, where X is a random number between 1 and the level of the edge. And that is only 1. A random number between 1 and 1. Really? Okay. Let's increase our swords again. Really, game? Come on. You approach what appears to be a metal coffin. Suddenly, you step dead in your tracks. A wave of horror sweeps over you. The coffin is actually an elaborate iron maiden, and it radiates a pure evil that undermines the foundations of your sanity. You steel your mind against the thing that occupies the metal monster. You feel it probe your mind for some weakness. So, it's a horror challenge. We'll play the queen... To win the challenge, because I do not want to take the chance that we will end up with an impairment card. You have kept your sanity. You sense the ancient evil that resides in the steel monster. You recall in your mind a file from a case in the, I can't pronounce that, region of Romania in the 1640s. A mad prince forged it from the metal melted down holy relics that of the surrounding towns and then tempered it into a giant vat filled with the blood of virgin peasant girls. A ritual of some sort empowered the vessel to serve as the repository of an evil spirit that had bargained with the prince. It must abide there even now. So, let's climb inside. You get a special feat if you climb inside. Uh, sorry, a special edge if you climb inside and don't die. There is a chance that we get an instant death card, though, on this. But I think we're going to try it anyway. It's a crazy idea and you know it. You feel it calling to you. It wants your blood. It needs your blood. The question is, though, is it strong enough to take it? Right, not the worst hand draw. A few high number cards. We have a king of wands. So we're desperate to see a wands card of some sort pop up over here. And we get a page of wands, which is amazing. So we have a king of wands and knight of wands. We will absolutely play the king of wands. And that lets us win the challenge. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and take the three with our nine. We'll take the two. Oh, sorry, we got an ace. I'm willing to believe there might be another higher level wands card here. And since we already have won the challenge, I'm going to use our two on the ace. And there was a higher wands card, so we'll take that with our knight. There's only one card left. The odds of it being a higher page, a, a ten in particular, uh, the page would be able to take that. The nine couldn't. Is very low. We play our page, and we win. In the end, it could not break you, and that which does not destroy you makes you stronger. All that courage is why I wanted a freaking feat, not an edge game. I can't even take any of this. 17 courage. Okay. And the edge we got from that is... The Kiss of the Maiden. During the results phase of any challenge option that has the poison or evade trap type, you are immune to the first three points of health loss that might occur. So we are immune to four points of damage from traps now. You've discovered a secret wooden door. It blends in almost seamlessly with the wall, but your keen senses were still able to detect it. Finding it is one thing. Figuring out how to open it is another. With some effort, you might be able to use the axe to get past a locked door or two, and that is the best chance we have. We are absolutely doing it. You'll note, by the way, that the game said that we would be allowed to draw 11 tricks. You're only ever allowed to have 10 on the board at once. No more than that. And, well, wow, that's amazing. We took the Page of Swords with our Knight of Swords. We took the Knight of Pentacles with our Queen of Pentacles. And that was, those were the two face cards we owned. So that couldn't have been any better. But it's getting even better. We took the, after all, the, the Knight of Cups we took with our Ten of Cups. And the Four of Cups we took with our Six of Cups. We are... Incredible. You better down the door. So much for being a secret. The way lies open now. The way down. So we're going to mark this on the map quickly. Another locked door. We're going to open this now. Or try to. You see a large locked door with a grotesque stone or ceramic arm protruding from its center. There is no sign of a keyhole anywhere. Inspecting the arm closer, you notice that it is poised to offer you an arm wrestle. Indeed, the arm looks like it might rotate on the wall. Perhaps wrestling it would offer access to what lies beyond. Well, it's a physical test, and we have several physical test feats now. Let's try this. The hand and arm seem to be mocking you. You decide to grip the arm firmly by the hand and wrestle it. Perhaps in this way, the door will open. Oh, well, we see that there's a King of Swords on the board, so we don't want to flip that card. All right, we won. You win the Contest of Strength. It wasn't easy, but gradually you managed to move the arm counterclockwise. Several times it seems to want to wrench your arm out of its socket, but in the end you prevail. The door clicks open. All right, everyone, we have found the basement. I forgot that we hadn't found the stairs down, so that would be super useful. Come on, butler, you have to be in here. You see a chessboard set up for the commencement of a game. Upon closer examination, you discover that the pieces are very strange. The black ones are carved out of some volcanic rock and seem to shift between normal pieces and twisted tentacled monsters. The white pieces, carved from alabaster, depict humans armed with all manner of weapons. You could swear that you see a knight that resembles yourself. Suddenly, in the chair across the chessboard, a grim specter of death appears. Your eyes widen in disbelief as the apparition beckons you to sit and play. You must fight to keep your sanity. Thankfully, we have a good hand. I'm very nervous about this encounter. This horror check in particular. So I'm going to use the Queen of Pentacles to take that three. 
We'll use our queen to take that four, and that lets us win the challenge. And actually, we didn't need the panic at all, it turns out. Your mind is strong. You stare back at the apparition and even muster a nonchalant smile, which seems to amuse it. The specter startles you. You wonder if this is some type of trick or illusion. Could this be real? You can sense the currents of sorcery at work here, but just what the source is, you cannot be certain. It beckons you to sit across from it. The apparition motions to the board again, suggesting that you begin your game. S uh, unlike your encounters with most other supernatural creatures, this specter of death seems to have no problem with you leaving, and you f feel particularly free to do so. A line from a poem suddenly springs to mind. I have a, resident, a rendezvous, wow, rendezvous with death at some disputed barricade. We'll come back for that. You feel your foot step down on the pressure plate, and then hear the pneumatic sounds of darts being shot through blow tubes. You catch a glimpse of the deadly swarm of needle tip killers heading your way. You react without thinking, tucking into an acrobatic duck and roll. We'll use the knight, just in case we don't... Just in case there's a... Since we only have two cups cards, I'm worried the next cups card we flip over will be the queen. And just in case, we'll play that knight to make sure that we get some points. It's a trap after all, so we need to be uh, careful about losing this. And unfortunately, it was the page of cups, so we did want to keep the, the knight. Too late now. You tumble away from the curtain of darts and emerge unscathed. Or a fortune? One experience point. We'll put that to good use. What's next? Let's grab... A heroic combat feat. A tall, well-dressed figure looms into view holding a silver platter in one hand as if to offer you an appetizer. Your eyes travel down to the platter and behold half a human head. You feel a surge of panic growing within you. You've been trained to expect and deal with things like this. Even so, no matter how many times you see something like it, it still requires steady nerves to keep you calm. We have a fantastic hand. I'm going to take the two with our four. Under the belief that we can use our queen a little later. Might as well use the knight to take the four, because we also have the page, which is the only other card the knight would take that the page couldn't take. And it was a good thing we held on to our queen, because we can take the knight of cups with that. Good thing we also didn't flip that card over right away. Okay, well done. You have kept your sanity. Are you the head waiter? You trolling inquire, the head waiter. Get it? Do you get it? He's got a head on his platter. <laughs> Standing in front of you is a figure of what was obviously once a butler or servant. You say once because you are sure that what you now confront is a supernatural entity of some sort. It is the most corporeal ghost that you have ever encountered. You have read of such things in Tobin's spirit guide, but you are certain that this is very unusual. You approach the butler and his glowing eyes are fixed on you. The head on the plate suddenly stares up at you as well. May I help you, sir? It's in tones, and you are not sure if you actually heard its voice in your ears, or just in your head. Without displaying the slightest amount of unease, you inquire about dessert by telling the ghost, Yes, my good man, the guests in the dining room are getting a little excited about their dessert. Could you head over to the kitchen and face their problem head on? He didn't actually say that. I felt like adding that last part. Apparently, he is not amused by my pun, however. Oh, but we did manage to get a smile out of him in the end. As you wish, sir, is all you hear, and amazingly, he fades away before your very eyes. More ghouls! Well, that means more punching. So I will play the ten... And I'll wait to do anything to that for a little bit. 
We'll absolutely use the queen on that knight. Use the two on the ace. So we won this challenge, so I'm willing to hold on to our knight of pentacles for a little longer. Actually, no, let's spend it. I will use our axe on the nine, turn it into a knight, and then we can use our machete on this ten, turn it into a knight. And we decimated them. You won the battle. The ghouls are no match for you. They fall where they stood, and the puddle of blood on the floor is now bigger than ever. Get probably a, a few courage cards from this. Still can't use any of that courage. We need another feat. Which reminds me, let me save the game. Okay, and then we'll take a combat feat, and then we'll call this session. We'll be playing for, I think, slightly over an hour. So here's Reckless Charge again. I do like that. Let's see. Roll one bone, and then select a revealed non-face trick card, and bump its card value down minus X. Then add X points or tricks taking score. Now, let's grab Reckless Charge, right? I said I was going to take this, I think, like two or three episodes ago, so let's grab this. So, roll one bone and bump the card values down on X random, not yet revealed, non face trick cards minus X, and draw X cards where X is the number of swords or cups rolled, whichever is higher. Any result cards that are wounds are doubled in the following phases. So it lowers all the non-face cards on the other side of the board and gives us, potentially, quite a bit of cards. But then, we suffered twice as many... Uh, it says wounds. I'm assuming that means hits, as opposed to a wound card. You will take it. All right, everyone, so I think we'll stop here. Thank you guys for watching, and when we come back... We still didn't... It must be in the attic. When we come back, we're... I guess we're... We're going to the attic. Is there any other reason to go on this side of the mansion? Yeah, we're go we're come back, we're going to the attic. So I will see you guys then. Thank you guys for watching and take care everyone.